Andy Katz here for the Pac-12 with an off-season chat with Andy Enfield from USC. And Andy, uh, Evan Mobley, as we expected, top three in the NBA draft. But uh, Isaiah returns, and the core of this team really is back for what should be another quality run within the Pac-12. And who knows, maybe deep again in the NCAA tournament. Uh, you had a chance to work out with your guys, which you didn't last summer. How much of a difference did that make? Well, it's the first year, Andy, we've had returnees with experience. Uh, bulk of our team is coming back. We did lose Evan and Taj Edi, who was second team all conference. So we lost our two leading scorers. But we replaced uh, Taj with the transfer, Boogie Ellis from Memphis, who's a double digit scorer, as well as uh, the, the other guys coming back with your experience. That we had a great NCAA tournament run, won a lot of games last year, 25 wins. So I think our team is excited to be here. They're uh, excited to play together again. And we added three or four freshmen that were, uh, I think can really help us our depth off the bench. So Isaiah Mobley, he returns. Um, he didn't have to take on as much responsibility, certainly with his brother there last year. Uh, how does his role change? Isaiah will be relied upon to do a lot of things similar to what Onyeka and Evan, they were the focal point of our offenses the last two years. Uh, two years ago, we had some good guards. Jonah Matthews was a senior. Last year, we had a brand new team with Evan and a lot of transfers and some attorneys. And, and so I thought our team did a great job last year of finding the roles. We had different guys step up. So this year, Isaiah Moby has to take a more advanced role in our offense. So we relied upon to do a lot of different things. He'll have the ball in different areas on the court, but he's such an unselfish and great passer that I think you'll see a lot of the same results we saw with Evan last year, where he'll find the open man. And it'll be a team offensive basketball game. You know, players like Ethan and Drew, um, I always felt like they were able to make timely shots. You didn't need them to consistently, you know, drop whatever it was in the teens or what have you. But it felt like your team last season, when it needed a bucket, certain guys were there to grab that moment and essentially, you know, weren't afraid to take that shot. How have you seen those guys develop into those kind of roles? Well, both Ethan and Drew had great years. Ethan, of course, was hurt for the first half of the season with his back injury came back and gave us a great spark off the bench drew peterson had a really solid year for us came up big isaiah white's back uh and, and guys like max agman polo be here for his third year so we'll re really rely on the players with experience and then chavez goodwin's back on the front line and of course we have josh morgan that sat out last year so we have a lot of uh, pieces that just have to develop together in the preseason here so when we go into the season, it'll be what, what you said last year. We guys step up. We we're 24 and 0 in games where three players scored double figures until the Gonzaga game in the Elite Eight game. So uh, that means that when we had more than Evan Mobley step up last year, we had three guys. We were undefeated the, the entire season. And we expect very similar results this year where we have a, a lot of capable players at every position that can go get us double figures on a game to game basis. The other thing, Andy, is I, what I loved about your team the last couple of years is. They've stepped up in big games. Not that you, you know, and, and, and this has been a problem, I think, for not just USC, but other schools. Sometimes the schools you're supposed to be give you the most problems. But it seems like with this sort of collection and core of USC, especially against your rival UCLA, they're up for that moment. H how do you get that all the time, which I know is a very big challenge because you haven't had to worry about it in the big games. Well, it's a credit to our players that no moment was too big for them last year. We, uh, Every NCAA tournament game you play is a huge game, obviously the biggest games of your year. But within our league last year, to, to beat UCLA twice uh, at the buzzer again, uh, we were successful against Oregon and Arizona, the, the better teams in our league. Uh, so I, I think uh, that's a credit to our players. They, they come to play, and they're very consistent throughout the year with their effort, their defense. We're top five in the nation in defense. I think we led the power conferences in field goal percent defense. I think we're second in the country in two-point percent defense. So – Whenever you have that commitment on the defensive end, I think you, the bigger games, uh, if you can carry that into those bigger games, you have a chance to win. So you mentioned Boogie Ellis. Um, every coach is looking at this transfer portal a little differently. Um, how are you approaching, you know, when you, need a, when you need a certain need and finding that player that fits, that's going to need to come in and contribute? This is our deepest team by far. We have 13 scholarship, really good players that are all packed up. Pac-12 level, and we only had to go out and get one transfer this year, Boogie Ellis, because we have four talented freshmen. Reese Waters is, is a, a pseudo-freshman because he played half the year for us last year, so 
The other three true freshmen are coming in. And uh, this will be a challenging year from a coaching perspective because we have so much talent uh, or depth. Uh, but uh, we also have the returnees, which is nice because when you're going through your offense and defensive concepts, they can teach the new guys, including Boogie, who's a transfer, learning a new system because he was at Memphis the last two years. Uh, so it's a nice, uh, a nice problem, so to speak, to have because we have a lot of talented players uh, that, that have expect to play minutes, but we have the, re the leadership from returnees that can really uh, have, have our, our program continue the way it's been going the last few years. So we're in this sort of transition period within COVID. I mean, a year ago, you're outside on the tennis courts um, trying to make things happen for workouts. You can obviously be inside and have normal workouts. We hope that the Galen Center can be packed or to some degree like we saw a couple of years ago in that great crowd yet against UCLA. But there's going to still be protocols to some degree, obviously. So how, how do you navigate this sort of new normal that we're in as we transition, hopefully, sooner than later, out of it? Well, I thought USC as a school, the Pac-12 and the NCAA did a tremendous job last year of, of testing and controlling the COVID environment for us to get a full season in and an NCAA tournament. I thought it was terrific on all fronts. This year, I think, will be challenging because most schools have students back. Uh, you, we have 19,000 students at USC, so our players will be exposed to just regular student life uh, on a more consistent basis this year. And I think it will be challenging across the country to, to get that balance uh, and also be able to test negative. Because I think, uh, as you saw, some of the football programs now, some of the conferences are making rules that if, if you have, have to shut down because of COVID, you basically forfeit your game and it becomes a loss on your record. So I, I, I think we're all going to be watching very closely how it plays out on the football side of things before the basketball season starts in November. So another aspect to that is obviously NIL, a name, image, and likeness. Uh, on one side, as a coach, certainly you got to embrace it. It's here. It's not going away. On the other, there's got to be buy-in from the players. I mean, obviously, if they're a member of your program, they got to be there for practice. they got to be there for games. Uh, they can't let a, a photo shoot or something like that disrupt. Um, so how do you manage that? Because, you, you know, it's there, but you also need to make sure they're committed to the program. Well, they are part of a USC basketball program, and they're here to get a great education, to get a great college basketball experience, and try to win as many games, obviously, as possible. But we want what's best for our players uh, off the court. If they have opportunities for the name, image, likeness, we're all for that, and we encourage that. However, they understand what they're here for, and, and that's going to be something separate on top of what they're doing within our program. And, and lastly, Andy, um, recruiting in this new normal using this format quite a bit for, for visits in terms of Zoom. You guys were able to go out on the road. Um, I know you can't specifically talk about the class of 22, but things are going well for you guys. Uh, how, how, what was it like this off season in recruiting where once again, we're not all the way there. You're allowed to go out, but you know there was definitely hot spots and peach jam and things, and you had to sort of navigate that in, in, in evaluating and making sure you and your staff and everyone else was safe. Well, we're in a fortunate position, Andy, because of our success the last two, four, six years. Uh, we've put six guys in the NBA the last four years. We've won a lot of games, competed in the national level, won games in the NCAA tournament. So recruiting becomes easier uh, the more you win and the more that recruits are able to see what you're doing with 100% graduation rate as well as putting guys in the NBA. So, so we're, we are in a fortunate spot right now. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, uh, recruits be interested in USC uh, and uh, – uh, I have a great coaching staff. My assistant coaches do a terrific job and our players do a great job of selling our program. So even though I can't comment specifically on recruits or the details of it, uh, we are in a very good spot right now at USC. Well, Andy, I appreciate it. Glad you're not having to roll uh, baskets out on the tennis court. Uh, you can actually, you know, uh, use your facilities uh, and hopefully we can see each other in person uh, this season uh, because I think USC again is going to be one of the better teams, not just in the Pac-12, but in the country. Thanks, Andy. Well, well, thank you. We're looking forward to it. Take care.